Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome. We'll give it a few minutes so everybody can join us, but it is such a beautiful day here in the Northeast. It's finally getting hot. We actually are supposed to be having a heat wave, which I know many people probably aren't excited about, but I am because little fun fact, I actually love the hot weather. 90 degrees plus is my happy place. On top of that, it is finally summer vacation up here. So what better way to spend a hot day than in some cool air conditioning listening to a story? So I'm Kimberly DeLude. I'm the author of the Freddy the Fly series. And today I'm going to be reading the first book in the series, Freddy the Fly Motormouth. It's a story about learning to listen. The illustrations were done by the amazing Brian Merton and I hope you enjoy the story. So let's dive in. Hi, I'm Freddie. Kids at school say I have a motor mouth. I thought that meant I had a car in my mouth. So I grabbed a mirror to get a closer look. Freddie, I looked as far back, Freddie, in my throat as I could. There was nothing there except, Freddie, put down the mirror. Oops, sorry, mom. Maybe I do have a motor mouth, but I can't help it. I just know a lot of really interesting things and I want everyone else to know what I know. You see, once someone starts talking about any subject, I can feel a small hum race through my body. Then the whirling and the swirling starts. The humming, whirling and swirling crank up my wings. Faster and faster they go until a loud buzzing noise starts. Finally, all the great things I know zoom out through the air. This morning, mom asks if I want eggs for breakfast. The humming in my body begins as my wings slowly whirl and swirl. Then, zoom, I go off babbling for 20 minutes. I talk about the chicken and their eggs in my favorite video game. I could talk about this forever, and I would, but it's time to go to school. My teacher, Miss Stinger, asks if anyone wants to share what they did over the weekend. I cross my arms trying to stop the whirling and the twirling, but they break free. And for the next 20 minutes, I share everything about my trip to the zoo. As I talk, the words whiz around inside my head. It's like they're bursting to get out, like a swarm of bees racing from the hive. They blast out of me until I am empty. I talk so much we miss snack time. Ooh, I would not like that. Snack time is my favorite. At recess, I whirl and twirl on the monkey bars. I'm shaking so much with what I want to tell everyone that I fall from the bars and scrape my knee. But I just keep talking all the way to the school nurse's office. When I get to the nurse's office, someone else is already there. I've never seen her before. I take a seat on a flower petal chair and say, hi. Slowly, the humming begins. The chair starts to shake as the hum turns into a buzz. I open my mouth to begin talking. Hi, I'm Miss Cleta, she squeals. I'm new here. This is my first day and I have to get my eyes checked. On and on she goes, never stopping once for air. She talks and talks. I wait for her to take a breath, but it seems like she never stops. I sit so long, my rear end goes numb, where could the nurse be? I've been sitting here forever and haven't been able to say a word. The worst part is, Mosquita keeps talking about things I don't like. Finally, I'm free and head to lunch. I get the dumpster dive special. As I start to eat, I hear a sound. It's a small hum, like an engine. I look up. There's Miss Guida. She's already talking and doesn't stop. Slowly, 
My eyes start to droop. Mosquita is blue in the face now and panting for breath, but she's still talking. The next thing I know, Miss Stinger is shaking me awake. Freddy, you're going to be late for class. Surprised, I jump up, wipe trash goo from my chin, and look around. All the other kids are already gone. Miss Stinger, Miss Guida is always talking, so I can't share all the cool things I know. I think Miss Guida has a motor mouth. Motor mouth? Isn't that what people say about me? I sure don't want my friends falling asleep. What can I do, Miss Stinger? Meet me after school for the first Motormouth Club meeting, she tells me. I get to the Motormouth Club meeting and Mosquita is already there. She is sitting on her hands with her mouth closed tightly. Her body is shaking so much, she's almost falling off her chair. Before she can start talking, I dive right in. My tongue feels great now that it's finally getting some use. But I stop when Miss Stinger holds up a jar with two lightning bugs. Mosquita and I both stare at it amazed. What you both need is to play red light, green light, Miss Stinger says. The red light means to turn your motor mouth off. You won't always have the lightning bugs with you. So let's talk about what you can do to help remember red light, green light. First, you should look at the person you're talking to, Miss Stinger tells us. Then, after you share one thing, stop talking and count to three in your mind. If you get to three and the other person hasn't started talking, then you can share a new thought. After you share that new thought, pause again and count one, two, three. That way you'll learn a lot about the other person because you stop to listen to them. Let's try it out now and then we can meet again tomorrow. At soccer practice, I'm super excited to show Slinky and Bumble my bike's new paint job. I feel the hum of the motor turn on as my body gets ready to take off. Hey guys, check out my new bike. I'm about to keep talking when I see a red light in my mind and I remember Miss Stinger's rule. It takes everything I have to count. One, two, three. The counting feels like it takes forever. Cool, says Slinky. Did you get the speed booster too? My body slams into a wall. Huh? The what? Bumble pipes in. I race mine in the insect invitational each month. I can't believe all these cool things I never heard about before. Maybe my friends know a lot of interesting things too. Flying home with dad, he asks me about my day. I tell him all the new stuff I learned, but I make sure to pause and count after telling him each new thing. Everyone has interesting things to share, Freddy, Dad says. You just have to give them a chance to tell you. At dinner, I'm about to burst. The whole table shakes as I try to hold in my news, but the humming in my head is too strong now, probably because I held so much in earlier. Guys, you'll never believe what I learned at school today. And on and on I go about Mosquita, Miss Stinger, and red lights that means stop talking. As I talk, I can see that my parents' eyes are closed. Even my sister, Lady B, is snoring in her dirt pudding. A red light flashes in my head. When was the last time I stopped and counted to three? I clamp my mouth shut. All the air whooshes out through my ears. Sorry, I mumble. The silence seems to stretch on until mom finally speaks. It's okay, Freddy. It will take practice. 
I'm about to start talking again when mom says, do you want to know a trick your grandparents taught me when I talk too much? My racing brain crashes so hard into the side of my head that it almost falls to pieces. Finally, it hums back to life. You had a motor mouth, I gasp. I can't believe it. I feel better just knowing I'm not alone. Yes, it runs in our family. Your great, great grandfather could talk a caterpillar's ear off. And one time I put an entire stadium to sleep because I talked so long about team mascots. See, look at me rambling on. I still have to watch myself or I'll have a motor mouth too. What's the trick, mom? Try looking at the people you are talking to. Watch their lips. If they are open or moving, it means the person has something to say. If their eyes are starting to close or they aren't responding, it may mean you've talked for too long. And of course, watch for that red light to tell you it's time to stop. I go to bed with a lot of things to think about. Getting along with others is not just about talking. It's about listening too. I wake up determined to use my counting and my eyes to control my motor mouth. Mom asks if I want pancakes for breakfast. My answer includes talking about how cave people invented pancakes. Then I remember the red light. I stop and count. One, two. My chair is shaking so hard, I'm about to flip over. But before I do, mom says, true, but this recipe was from your great grandma B. She was famous for her pancakes. Huh? All the air goes out of me. Really? I never knew that about great grandma B. At school, I tell everyone about my new shoes. As my motor really starts to hum, I remember the rules and I pause. I can see Bumble's lips are shaking as if he's holding something in too. So before I go on, I put on the red light and I count. One, two. My whole body is whirling and swirling now. The hum becomes a loud buzz that shakes the whole floor. Before I get to three, Bumble chimes in. My dad makes shoes. Again, I feel the hum stop and my body goes still. Really? Shoes? I didn't know that. Yeah, my dad makes all kinds of shoes. Usually six or eight to a set. Bumble then promises to take us to the shoe shop someday. In the afternoon, the Motormouth Club meets again. How'd it go? Miss Stinger asked me in Mosquita. Did the red light and counting to three help you this week? After all, it's not just about talking less. It's about what we have learned from listening more. It went great. I learned all kinds of stuff. I never knew about my friends, I answer. Then I pause and begin my count. One, two. Miss Stinger smiles and nods. Was it hard to stop talking and listen to others, Freddie? I start to count again. One, two, three. Miss Stinger is silent and her eyes are wide open. Since that's the sign I should keep talking, I continue. Yeah, it was pretty hard at first, but I can't wait to hear what everyone has to say tomorrow. Now that I know how to listen and wait for my turn to talk, I'm ready to take on another day. So Freddie and his friends gave us a lot of great strategies for working on uh, helping take conversational turns when we know that we're a motor mouth. But one of the biggest questions I get asked from both kids and adults is how to know if you are a motor mouth. 
In our story, if you remember, Freddie and Mosquito were both told this. Other people, usually adults, have used that term with them. So they've heard it and they know that there's something they need to work on. But in a lot of cases, it's really hard to identify if this is something that you are doing because like Freddie, you have so much you just wanna share and usually you just can't contain it in. So I have a little activity I like to do with my students that you guys can also try at home. It's usually best if you can have a third person like an adult who can be your recorder, but you can do it without one. So what you're going to need is yourself as well as a friend or a sibling that you can have a conversation with and then hopefully that one other person, like I said, who can be the recorder. They're going to need a piece of blank paper and then some kind of writing utensil. I like to use a red and green pen, but really you can use anything that you have on hand. And then you're just gonna fold it in half. And then on each half, you're going to draw a circle. And that circle is going to be representative of one of the conversational partners in the discussion that's going to be had. So you're gonna give, assign one that red one circle and one that green circle. Then you're gonna have the child have a conversation. Just let them speak and as they're speaking, you make a mark in the circle for each thought or idea that they share and you do the same thing for the other person. Then what you're going to do is at the end of the conversation, you're going to open up the two circles and you're going to see if they're even or mostly even because in a conversation, it's never going to be perfectly even. There always is going to be someone who shares a few more ideas than the other person. But what you're looking for is a mostly even shaded in circle. Or what you might discover is, this might be hard to see on here, that the red, oh, the green didn't come out very well, is much more shaded in. So this would represent our stoplight. And if we see that much red, more than a few lines that you can't really make out in our other circle, then you're gonna know that you might have a problem with being a motor mouth, that you are dominating the conversation and you're not giving the person time to share the things that they know. So what I like to do when this happens is do another conversation. And this time I wanna say for the person who had the red circle and was maybe talking a little too much, keep doing the slashes every time they share a thought. But now in the second circle, what I'd want you to do, it's really not showing up, is write down what they're saying. So this is going to show you if even those couple of comments they made were interjections instead of two comments. So are they saying things like, yeah, that's cool, and just kind of keeping the conversation going along, or are you truly giving them time to share their ideas? Because if that's the case, it's a great way to go back and look and see like, hey, I learned some really cool facts by listening to someone else. Or after you do this, if you're seeing that you truly are maybe a motor mouth, something that all of us do need to work on from time to time, then you can go back and use some of the strategies that Freddie has used in his story. I hope you enjoyed Freddie the Fly Motor Mouth. I so enjoyed being here with all of you today and have a great rest of your day and a lovely summer. Bye guys.